Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to this in-depth look for every single sign. I will go through each sign in this video. We're gonna have a look at your 12th house. We're gonna have a look at Pisces. And we're going to answer the question, how do you like to escape? How do you escape? You know, when you want to rest, when you want to relax, when you want to have that feeling like you've stepped outside of time, out of the boundary of time. You know, different people get it in different ways. So they talk about the runner's high. You know, runners, when they run, they get into the zone and they feel really good. Or some people achieve that zone through relaxing on a beach. Some people get it by reading a book. There are all kinds of different ways that we can escape and that's what I wanted to explore in this video today. So I have got some hand-drawn squiggle, squiggles, you can see here for every single sign. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw on my iPad, on my good notes here, uh, and hopefully put that up by my side so that you can see my thinking. And the other thing I want to do in this video is I don't just want to talk only about the 12th house and Pisces in just a flat sort of a way. I want to do some synthesis here. I want to incorporate other factors. So you'll see when we kick off with Aries, I'm gonna talk about your energy areas. I'm gonna talk about your physical body as well and how that impacts how you rest and things like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set up my little makeshift whiteboard here. <laughs> I am filming this at my local university campus. I wanted to film this at the beach because the topic is all about how do you escape? And sometimes I like to escape by going to a beach, but uh, yeah, I think it would not be practical at all. It's Sunday today, there will be a lot of people out and about. So what I thought I would do is I would bring us here where it's very quiet. No one is at a university campus on a weekend, except for me. <laughs> and actually, as I was putting these notes together, I kind of learned some things about myself and how I relax or how I sometimes don't relax or can't relax. So there's, there's that, I'll discuss that for every sign. By the way, with the audio today, I'm really hoping that, oh, and another reason I wanted to add in here why I'm doing this video, it's also because we've got Rahu in Pisces until now it's May, 2025. So I think this is gonna be useful information across the next year and a half. You can contemplate this for your sign and you can see you know how how this works for you in a very real world practical sort of a way so let's take a look at Aries what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw on the chart as I speak a couple of little things I'm just going to draw a little star in here to start so that I can sync up the so that I can sync up the editing so if I draw a little star now there we go I can sync it all up all right Aries welcome Aries this is Aries ascendant this is Aries moon this could be Aries Sun if you have got your Sun in Aries or you've got a lot of planets conjunct your Sun or you've got one of the nodes with Sun or if Sun is quite important in your chart you can look from the Sun perspective as well today but definitely ascendant and moon you'll definitely want to see this today so how do you escape Aries? Well, I'm looking at the chart here and what I'm seeing is, I'm just gonna put these notes here. What I'm seeing is we've got, we've got Pisces there in your 12th house. Okay, so I'm just gonna squiggle on Pisces there. So this is definitely showing me that you would be able to relax by being besides water. I could imagine a beach day would be relaxing for you. I could imagine escaping to a place where there are large bodies of water would be healing and nurturing and feel really good to you. 
The other thing we've got here with Pisces is foreign cultures. And that's also Sagittarius here in the ninth. And when I take a look at the ninth and the twelfth together, these are in their original places. So for you, I think the concept of escape does require travel. I think it does require you to go somewhere far away. I think you would love to go to a foreign place foreign cultures, immersing yourself in something completely foreign to you. I'd imagine that that would feel, that would feel really good to you, Aries. I also wanted to have a look at your physical energy as well to see, okay, a, what kind of a traveler are you? You know, uh, is, is, is travel going to be important? I do think it would be. Mars rules the first house and the eighth house. So I've got here definitely a mixture of both. So a mixture of both all go, so holidays that are all go versus holidays that are totally uh, stop, stop energy. I would, I would imagine that you need sometimes you could actually do with a holiday where you're on the go, where you're moving around, changing location, exploring, wandering. It's a bit physical in nature. I could imagine that that would be good. I was also looking at things like, would you want to go on a long trip? And for that, uh, you know, I was looking, you've got opposite your 12th house there, you've got Mercury, right? We've got Mercury lording the sixth house so i was thinking that perhaps shorter trips are better for you aries i can't imagine i could imagine that um and especially with that sort of restless mars energy in the ascendant there i'm kind of seeing that i think you might not like long trips away you'll see as i get deeper into the other signs there are other signs that would love to go away for a long time if they can that would be suitable for them whereas I feel like for you guys short distances might be better I've also got here learning is a form of escape for you as well if we take a look here uh, at your 12th house learning Jupiter right so learning good books good books, fantasy, fiction, any of that. I could imagine that you could escape through books as well. And the other thing that I came to as well for you Aries, because we've got Mars lording your ascendant, I am thinking from a Mars perspective here as well. I could imagine, and this is gonna sound odd, but every time I talk about Mars, I do often talk about clutter clearing, the need to get rid of things because Mars is desire as well. Um, and with Mars in your ascendant there, I started thinking about Pisces and then we've got mm, Virgo down there in the sixth. I started thinking about chaos. The kind of chaos that we have in the sixth but what do we have when we come back up to Pisces we've got completion we've got unity we've got everything making sense everything coming together so I was really looking at the movement definitely from Mercury through to Jupiter here in the 12th and yeah I was thinking weirdly that cleaning or making everything organized again you might get a lot of satisfaction from that or that feeling of I can rest now it's like I can rest now that everything's done okay so that is definitely something I'm seeing there with Aries and that's unique to you Aries I think 
you can get that sense of rest and relaxation when you're on top of everything, when everything's organized, when everything's neat, when everything's clean and come together and completed. I could imagine that that would be a time, a time that feels really good to you. So Aries, let me know in the comments below how this resonated. Let me know where you feel uh, through experience, you know, where you feel the most relaxation. And that could be something totally different to what I've said. And that would be different planets seated in different places in your chart. But I was really just looking at the purity of Aries to see, all right, what would an Aries person like? Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon, or even Taurus Sun, as per this ideal Vedic system of astrology. What we're going to do, Taurus, is we are going to take a look at how you relax. We're going to take a look at how you escape. You know, we've got Rahu in Pisces up until May 2025. And I thought it'd be good to do some analysis and some synthesis just of your chart, uh, you know, in a very basic way. We'll have a look at the different houses and we'll have a look at how do you like to relax. So if we take a look here at your 12th house, we've got Mars. Okay, she's going to draw that on. We've got Mars lording your, there we go, Mars lording your 12th house there straight away when it comes to relaxation when it comes to downtime or getting into the zone we've got mars here and it's not just any mars it's an aries mars here so i imagine that you could escape through exercise exercise would actually be a really good way for you to kind of I sort of want to say traverse layers of consciousness you know they talk about getting into the zone and I know that we've got some of that happening in Puno Vasu which is really Gemini I do believe um, that traversing realms of consciousness we do have that there but let's just stay with this so we've got here escape through exercise that's where you get into the zone and that's what I was talking about in the introduction where runners when they get a certain rhythm going and the physical body is in great harmony I think I think that's what it is there's just this tremendous harmony and you kind of get into this zone where you get outside the bounds of time you know and it feels really really good and it's that thing that you want to do again or well, they talk about as well the runner's high I think there's stuff like that the runner's high and that's all the endorphins and it feels really good so there's that kind of thing that we've got here I was also looking at Pisces for you and I wanted to see all right what are, what's the deal with Pisces in your 11th house let's draw that on here got here Pisces in the 11th likes to escape or travel with friends siblings colleagues and Mars Lords your 12th and 7th house so you might also like to disappear with your partner okay because I'm looking at Scorpio there so that could be partner that could be in-laws, family, but definitely there's this sense Taurus that I believe you would like to, when it comes to escaping, getting away from it all, relaxing, when you visualize that kind of treat for yourself, I could imagine that that scene that you visualize would be you with the people that you really love you're somewhere now it could be far away but equally it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be somewhere far away I could imagine even just a getaway that's close to home could be fine for you because the other thing is when we look at your ascendant now I know I've used this kind of pink color here in Pisces but I'm going to use it for your ascendant here uh, Venus right 
when we look at your ascendant and who you are as a person hang on that s there we go uh, um, when we look at who you are as a person you've got these lovely fixed energies here in Kendra position right so I could also imagine that you'd be the kind of person who would like a regular sort of a holiday spot or it's that kind of thing where every year the family goes to now is it is it the cabin in the woods it could be with this Mars energy here lording your 12th and the 7th so I am kind of seeing it could be that kind of vibe but it's it's that kind of place there's some place you like to get away to but it's a regular routine sort of a thing I could imagine that you would like to create possibly even let's have a look where yeah I'm looking at where Leo is as well I'm also so I'm currently looking at Leo and I'm looking at um, Sagittarius and what I'm seeing here is that I could imagine you'd like to have a regular holiday place and there's some form of tradition there's some form of tradition that every year we go to that lovely little spot and the family gathers round and we relax and we have this lovely downtime I could imagine that that would be something you would love to create Taurus you can let me know in the comments below if I've got any of that right you can let me know how do you like to relax or escape or get away from it all I would love to hear what you have to say in the comments below and remember your chart could be quite different you might have a lot of planets you know uh, in, in Virgo there in, in your fifth house or something like that in which case I would be saying very different things but this is all just exploration we're just taking a look thank you so much for tuning in Taurus and we are now going to welcome Gemini Gemini welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Gemini ascendant Gemini moon or Gemini Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so Gemini how do you like to escape how do you like to relax we're going to take a look at that in this video now okay I'm going to just go for white scribbles here because on all the other ones I've been doing multicolors and it's all getting a bit long okay Gemini how do you like to escape right let's take a look at your 12th house so we've got Taurus here and what I'm seeing here is that you would like to escape through fine dining, restaurants, cafes, shopping. What are all the Venus type things? What does Venus like to do? And I'd imagine that Venus likes to dress up and go, go somewhere beautiful and enjoy a delicious meal or go to a museum or, um, you know, even shopping. I'd imagine that, you know, maybe yeah you, you would like to to dress beautifully and and go shopping or because we've got fixed earth here right so that is something material this is why I'm thinking about shopping I'm thinking about food I'm thinking about uh, and I'm thinking about what you'd like to wear maybe when you pack your suitcase you quite like to take beautiful things or beautiful outfits or you know you would you would have the energy to carry that you'd be like it's okay I'll, I will pack the extra thing even though it's heavy but I'll, I'll take it yeah I've got here art galleries seeking beauty okay Taurus we've got Mrigshira here Mrigshira the deer that seeks beauty so as well when you go abroad you might like to um, seek out beautiful things you might like going shopping to find something rare and beautiful that you take back to your home and then you know in your home you're like oh well I bought this when I was in San Francisco or I bought this when I was in Peru or, or wherever it is now you've got Pisces in the 10th house so one of the things that I see here is that your profession could be um, helping people relax so your profession so what do I mean by that well there are lots of professions like this um, you know even people like coaches counselors therapists uh, you know massage type people 
holiday type people. Let's have a think. Um, what do they call it? Oh, there's a word for it. Hospitality. Yeah, definitely. Hospitality type stuff. So professionally, um, you could... Your profession could be something Piscean in nature where you're in hospitality or you're actually working with someone's mind to help them relax, which is, of course, you know, Gemini. You do have Gemini as your ascendant, so that's the mind. So I could imagine that you do work with the mind. Deep meditation. Through deep meditation, you draw answers through from the other side. And I was thinking about the chart of Einstein because I'm pretty sure he's a Gemini ascendant. There's also Ram Das as well, who's a Gemini ascendant. And, and both of these men were very keen on finding answers on the other side of the veil. You know, they, they weren't content with what the world had to give them. These men had to go further. They had to go on a journey. So professionally, they would go on journeys to find answers and they would go beyond the veil as part of their creativity. Now, I've also got here, got a loud bird. Uh, I've also got here charity, social work with foreign places as well. Uh, and again, I'm looking at that because of this here this axis here you've got Virgo you've got Pisces here we've definitely got charity and social work here as well charity and social work with foreign places but definitely spending money and that's because of your Taurus up there in the 12th house definitely that is you well gemini thank you so much for tuning in we are now going to welcome cancer cancer welcome thank you so much for joining so this is cancer ascendant cancer moon or cancer sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology all right cancer let's take a look at what we have here so up in your 12th house we've got gemini so for you, short trips are brilliant. Short trips are really ideal for you, Cancer. And as well, Cancer, Cancer ascended here, I could imagine that you're quite a bit of a homebody. You know, you probably don't want to go on big long trips and be away for six months or something like that. I could imagine that that wouldn't feel good to you. I could imagine that you want to be at home. So there's a real thing with cancer about being at home and I could imagine that you're not quite the type to have like maybe the thought for, for some people the thought of backpacking around Europe for like a whole year that's exciting for some people but I could imagine that for you you might not want to do that because you've got Gemini here and I've got the feeling as well with Gemini here you might also feel escape when you're with good friends. I've got here good friends, socializing. You've got the ability to get lost in a great conversation. You know, I'd imagine that your needs for travel aren't huge maybe, or if, if they are, short trips would do you well. So the occasional city break where you go away for three days, that could be really good. Now you've got Pisces in the ninth house. So I could imagine that you would love to learn about foreign cultures. Cultures, try and fit that on the screen. I can imagine that you'd love to learn about foreign cultures, but learning in general would provide you with escapism and fun. Like even just learning something new, that could be like taking a holiday for you, which I think is wonderful, Cancer. I kind of get the vibe here that your mm, travel needs aren't huge. Mind you, you do have Capricorn here in the seventh and the seventh is faraway places, marketplace, 
um, places, whoops, marketplace. What else is, I mean, work could take you abroad. Work could give you travels that you wouldn't otherwise do on your own. So you yourself might not nominate to do big long trips or something like that. But if a company is paying you, then you, you would do that really well. Uh, and a company could pay you to do long trips and that kind of thing. So I can see that. I can see that as part of work, travel might be something quite big in your life. But otherwise, I could imagine that even just a great long conversation with a friend, that could be very therapeutic and, you know, um, you get into the zone through that. Or it could even be through, now don't, we shouldn't forget here that um, this is hands and you are a candidate, uh, Cancer, for getting that I'm in the zone feeling when you're crafting. Maybe when you're crafting with your hands or you're making something or you're creating something, being creative, that is where you might get that sensation of, I can relax, I can forget about my troubles. I can just see the camera batteries flashing, I'm gonna to have to replace that. But Cancer, I wanna thank you so much for tuning in. We are now gonna welcome Leo. Leo, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So this is Leo Ascendant. Leo Moon or Leo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. All right, Leo, so how do you like to relax? How do you like to escape and get away from it all? Well, we've got Cancer here in your 12th house. And one of the things that I'm gonna say is that I could imagine you would love to be by water. You'd love to be by the sea. You'd love to be, now I could imagine that if you go on holiday you would like a beach holiday. You would like to be somewhere sunny and by the water, all that kind of thing. I could imagine that you would really enjoy that. Some signs, they have a real need to be by water. They will actually recharge by large bodies of water and you're one of those signs. The other thing that is quite interesting about how you would like to escape and relax when I was thinking about your sign is that I would imagine escape for you is something under the radar or it's private or it's intimate or it's quiet. It's, it's, it's not like you want everybody there. I, I get the sense that, and that's contrary to your nature, Leo, because look at that, you're, yeah, Leo Ascendant, you're the sun, you're um, your center of attention and you know parties and grand affairs and things they're all happening here with Leo but when it comes to escaping I think you might actually be the kind of sign that's like yeah I've got here there's something romantic about switching off all devices and disappearing or going off grid or switching it all off and being totally isolated but isolated with the people that you love. I do think that you would, would enjoy being with family. I, I, I imagine that escape for you is private time and with family. Because we've got cancer here and cancer is moon, mother, family. So yeah, and I've got here cancer in the 12th pure escape there's a purity here there's a purity because the moon only lords one sign so with all the other signs I'm able to look at okay who's lording the 12th and what else is that planet lording Whereas here we've just got the moon lording your 12th. So there's a purity as well that I'd imagine that you can achieve when you do escape. And it's something like escape for you could be something sacred even. Or um, yeah, sort of mystical. I am looking here at, at these moksha houses here. 
moksha signs, I should say. And yeah, I'm, I'm getting this sense that I think for you, escape should ideally be by the water. There's some purity here. There's also something sacred. Private, quiet. These are the sort of things that I'm getting here for Leo. Leo, you can let me know in the comments below how you do like to escape. I was just having a look here and I'm just having a go. But the other thing is note that if something's very contrary to what I'm saying, it might be that you've got a lot of planets. Um, for example, you might have a lot of planets in your third house in Libra and then that will give quite a different effect. So yeah. Anyway, Leo, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now we're going to take a look at how do you like to escape? You know, what kind of a, when you go on holiday, what, what kind of a holiday do you like to go on? Yours is really interesting. I've got here that you can escape through creativity. I imagine being creative and expressing yourself so it's, it, you're, you're great Virgo because you sort of may not even need to go anywhere <laughs> but to have a holiday. You could just be creative at home and you feel like you've gone on a holiday. Um, I've also got here you can stop time when your hands are engaged which is quite an interesting thing to say. Ah, that's this. Yeah, because I was looking at creativity and stop time when hands on whoops oh, hang on I wanted to put a hyphen there we go <laughs> um, yeah I was thinking about this because I was thinking about creativity and then I was visualizing you guys painting or being artistic or making something and then I started thinking about hands and then I started thinking about your third house and what do we have there we've got Scorpio Scorpio is about stopping so you can kind of literally stop time when you're being creative which I thought was so powerful you don't particularly need to go places you can and it could be your work that gets you to travel okay so we've got Pisces here in your seventh house so through work uh, work can take you abroad definitely but when you're working that's not really a holiday but sometimes and I think most workplaces are pretty good about this when they you know pay for you to go somewhere else they typically I, I've been fortunate to have this in my life where I when work has paid for me to go somewhere else they've said oh yeah since you're in that part of the world have a look at this and they paid for a ticket to something or they paid for a nice dinner or they you know I've, yeah not so much now the economy is quite different I could imagine that that's not happening now but um, a long time ago it did <laughs> I've also got his solo activities are probably very good for you uh, solo solo travel Virgo you are one of the signs who can travel on your own you wouldn't have that a lot of people have this that when you know they go somewhere beautiful or then there's a sunset and they think oh I wish there was someone who could you know I could share this with you don't have that I could Virgo I could imagine that you could because firstly you're Virgo ascendant here um, and as we've seen through tarot that is the hermit okay uh, I don't like to mix tarot with sidereal Vedic astrology but this is just just this one time I'm just doing a little bit of that the other thing is that we've got Leo here and Leo is quite the solo um, person you know the king that stands alone so I could imagine that that you'd be fine to travel by yourself if, if you had to but the thing is that you could definitely travel with your partner as well you would love that and why would you love that and there'll be something dreamy about that there'll be something um, almost fantasy like 
about traveling with your partner. That would just be like dreams come true. The beautiful thing about you, Virgo, is that um, that fantasy element here is built in to your partnership house. So being with the right partner will feel like an escape or that you've gone somewhere or that you know the two of you just go somewhere even though you're in the same town maybe but you guys being together and having a good time could feel really dreamy and really lovely thank you so much for tuning in Virgo we are now going to welcome Libra Libra welcome thank you so much for joining this is Libra ascendant Libra moon or Libra sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so how do you like to escape Libra when you go on holiday what do you like to do where do you like to go what do you like to do all right yours is very interesting by the way I love studying your one Libra look at this you got Virgo here so I've got you can escape through short holidays short holidays I imagine short holidays are better for you you know little bursts here and there rather than like you go to one place for six months or something I could imagine what's better for you is to go to lots of different places but in shorter bursts I could imagine that that could be really good you can definitely travel on your own if you want to uh, that is something because we've got Virgo here we've got the solo traveler whoops can't spell solo traveler um, so we've got the solo traveler here and here as well you've got Aries this is seventh house is another place of foreign travel but I tend to see it having more to do with work or, or even permanent relocations and things like that but on your own like work might send you to places it could be something like that you could also it could also be your work that's sending you abroad through the 12th house as well because you've got Virgo here now the other thing I've got here with Virgo being here in your 12th is that you might like to escape to chaotic or busy places you might like to go to India I'd love to hear from the Librans below if India is a place that you want to travel to or have traveled to and really enjoyed but I think India would be a great location for you and that's really interesting because as I was writing the notes for all of these signs I've got my handwritten notes here I don't have any particular locations for any other sign but whereas for you guys I definitely think India might be just some fantastic place for you to go to the other thing I could see you doing Libra is um, volunteer or charity work charity work abroad uh, I think that would be brilliant for you if that's the kind of thing that that you would like to do let's see why do I have Aries there yeah that was solo traveler what else have we got here the other thing that I wrote down as well is that working on your spiritual side is like a form of escape so again you don't particularly need to go anywhere you could just be doing your own self-development work um, but we've got the word work here and we've got the word work here because we've got Virgo here so working you're working but you're working on your spiritual side and through that and so that's reading books or self-improvement or doing workshops and you don't particularly have to go anywhere but you could be very recharged and refreshed through that process of working on your spiritual side that might just feel really good to you Libra thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome Scorpio Scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining I'm just taking the time I think we're okay Scorpio how do you like to get away how do you like to relax how do you like to escape okay oh the, I loved studying your one I, I must say Libra was fun to study same as you guys you guys are really fun to study you've got Libra in here and I've got written here that you could 
you could meet the one while you're abroad you could meet someone that you fall in love with so much that you get married isn't that amazing you could yeah because this is commitment you've got here commitment uh, Libra that's one way I'm reading that but also foreign places foreign places foreign um, foreign bride yeah bride or husband isn't that interesting now this romance and overseas connection th this is here when we look at your when we look at where is Pisces okay so Pisces is here in your fifth house of romance I've got here for you romance is escape isn't that wonderful and I've also got written here one of the best one of the reasons as well why you are considered the best partner or the best lover in the whole zodiac that goes to you Scorpio and of course it does um, because I think for you romance is a form of escape and that's why I think when people are with you perhaps your romantic partner they feel like they're on holiday you know they might feel like they're escaping their world just by being with you now I've got here you could marry overseas you could also have two wedding days if you wanted to okay because we've got the fifth house here fifth house of romance also wedding day right uh, and we've got a dual sign here Pisces is a dual sign so you could get married twice and these are the people who you know and especially if you have um, like a marriage and so many people I know are like this partners from one country that and the other partner is from another country so they'll have one wedding in this country and they'll have one wedding in the other country you're definitely a candidate for that Scorpio I think that's all the notes I've got here for you um, I've also got oh I've got here yes that you would like to shop overseas shopping that's because of Taurus here hunt down beautiful things you know we've got seventh house here right which is seventh house is the furthest um, place oh hang on I just wrote place I should write seventh house there oh it's not gonna go away there we go seventh house seventh house is the furthest place away from your ascendant right so that's why I also look at foreign things there I could also be looking at the ninth as well because that's journeys as well we can see here I mean when it comes to short term shorter term journeys work could be sending you abroad um, that is a possibility as well well Scorpio let me know how you get on in the comments below I would love to hear from you and we are now going to welcome Sagittarius Sagittarius welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Sagittarius ascendant Sagittarius moon or Sagittarius sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so this is really interesting Sagittarius when I was contemplating your sign and how you like to travel and how you like to escape thought about your ascendant because you are the natural traveler you are the one who goes places you want to be on a journey and if you're not on a journey you're planning a journey and you're always going somewhere okay so you are just the natural traveler but it's really quite interesting when it comes to pure escape and getting that true escapist quality you're very interesting because you actually don't have to go anywhere you're perhaps one of the most capable signs to transform where you are isn't that incredible because your ascendant is all about uh, travel here but the reason I'm saying this is because we've got Scorpio here in your 12th and this is all about stop this is all about stillness um, and this is reminding me actually of um, an, was it an album or a song by Jamiroquois something about traveling without moving that could be you 
And you could really alchemize things without moving alchemy. You could alchemize things without going anywhere. So that's quite interesting. The other thing about you, Sagittarius, is that you can escape through your mind. We've got Gemini here. And what I'm seeing here with Gemini, yeah, escape through the mind. I actually think when it comes to getting that quality of being in the zone, when it comes to um, getting that feeling like you've stepped outside of time, you're actually very suited to something like meditation. I didn't write that on my notes, but that's coming up, so that's really good. Yeah, definitely meditation would be great for you. It would be great for your mind. It would be a great way to um, release things, possibly. You might think that you need to, because of your ascendant being so strong here, you might think you need to go somewhere to achieve that state. But actually, I'm beginning to think of all the signs. You're the, you're the one who can travel the most without actually physically going anywhere. Isn't that incredible? Wow. Also, we've got this um, Leo here in the ninth. And Leo doesn't, that's the king. And when you look at the king on a chessboard, he hardly moves. You know, the queen moves everywhere, but the king, king doesn't move much. King gets to move one stop at a time. So yeah, Sagittarius, yours is very interesting. I've also got written here that um, escape for you would be private because I'm looking at Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces here. Um, escape for you would be private. You can escape through your mind. Your fantasies would be incredible as well. That's another thing that I've got here. That through the mind you can have incredible uh, flights of fancy, imagination, fantasy. You'd make great writers, of course. Um, that's a given. You're very deep, generally, anyway. Also, another thing is being by water. I can imagine that you would get a lot of healing uh, and that feeling of being in the zone just by being close to a large body of water as well. All right, Sagittarius, well, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Capricorn, when you want to escape and get away from it all, what is the best way for you to do that? Well, since you've got Sagittarius here in the 12th, I'm going to say that a really great way for you to escape and get away from it all is actually by studying. Isn't that interesting? So study, studying something new could be a form of total rest and relaxation for you. Isn't that interesting? So you don't necessarily have to go anywhere far away, though you can. Okay, this is um, long distance travel. So you can definitely go places. But I'm seeing you more so going places through the mind. got here education learning and studying offer you a quality of escapism so maybe when you're studying something um, and especially I would say studying something new as well I've got here that you would be the kind of person who'd take books on a holiday that could be a thing that you love to do maybe you do like to visit a foreign location somewhere far away maybe you do like to be sat on a beach or lying on a beach but I could imagine you'd take a book with you 
or that would be a fun thing or maybe when you're on those long haul flights maybe you like to read as opposed to watch the movies or something like that. Another thing here that I've got is that you could do trips to ancestral places. Uh, now I'm, uh, I'm having a look at a couple of things here this is quite interesting ancestral places because we're looking at father and I was also looking at Leo here as well but I was looking at father and I was thinking yeah I think you would like to do something like follow in the footsteps of your father or go back to the place where he grew up or where your grandparents grew up or something like that I've also got here um, you might like to do long trips to meet great teachers. I actually know someone in England who um, he went to the gravestone of his favorite economist, which I thought was pretty cool actually. That, that's what he thought was, and he did that in his 20s, and that was something that he just thought was like a really cool thing to do. So yeah, I could imagine that that would be that would be something that you might do as well. So I've got here long trip to meet great teachers of times gone by, um, or you might like to go for workshops or, you know, retreats where you're going to learn something new. I could imagine that that's important for you. The other thing is that you're a Capricorn ascendant, so purpose is going to be important. I'd imagine that the trip would have to have some sort of purpose or, um, it can't I, I don't know I don't particularly just see you going to a beach and lying down and doing nothing for five days and then going home I don't see that I think there's got to be purpose there's got to be meaning you're possibly doing something but you're furthering yourself or you're stretching yourself somehow or you're seeking the truth or you're going on yeah as I say a trip to commemorate something or or walk in the footsteps of some great person or something like that definitely seeing that well Capricorn you can let me know in the comments below what it is that you do like to do when you travel or relax or escape or any of those things we are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, thank you so much for joining. So this is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon or Aquarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now when I was studying your one Aquarius, it was really interesting because I feel like you've got some things in common with Pisces and I'll encourage you to watch the Pisces one and I'll be encouraging the Pisceans to watch your one as well because you've got Saturn, both of you have got Saturn lording your 12th house. Now you're also similar to Capricorn, okay, because you and Capricorn have got Saturn lording your ascendant. So this is quite interesting. So how, how are you like Pisces? Okay, so what I would say to you and Pisces is that neither of you probably, though I think Pisces would be better than you, then I'd say neither of you know how to fully relax. Isn't that interesting? It would be hard to relax because you've got Saturn lording this place and Saturn is all about work. So it would be hard to relax here. But the beautiful thing about what you've got, the setup that you've got, is that you can be helping other people relax. Okay, so I'll write here, helping others relax. You can make a profession out of helping others relax. And that's why very often we've got great counselors, coaches, therapists coming out of um, Aquarius. Aquarius make great psychologists. They're natural psychologists, psychiatrists, counselor, coach, any of those things. Aquarians are great at that. And one of the reasons they're great at that is because they are prepared to uh, figure out, they're prepared to work basically because this is a subconscious house here as well, this 12th house here. So they're good at delving into the subconscious mind and figuring out what's going on in there. The other thing that they're really good at is helping other people 
to relax, helping other people to uh, figure out their subconscious minds as well. But let's let's stick to the topic at hand and look at escapism and let's look at um, how you like to get away or go on holiday or that kind of thing. So now with Capricorn, I was saying that they need to have a purpose when they go abroad. Otherwise, they'll feel redundant or they'll feel silly. And I'd imagine you're the same. I would imagine that when you go abroad, when you go on holiday, you would um, you would benefit by having a purpose. The right here, purpose. Yeah, you'd benefit by having a purpose, by having something to do. You're a great candidate for uh, doing business abroad. You're also a great candidate for corporate spon sponsorship, so companies sponsoring you to travel or um, companies sponsoring or, or companies I've even seen people with an Aquarius ascendant for example if they're relocating a company will pay for the relocation costs a company will pay for their visa a company will pay for flights everything everything to do with travel the company just always pays for it so you could have that kind of a setup here But definitely there's something about your business might be helping other people relax. Now the other good thing, Aquarius, so okay, it's hard for you to relax, but you are one of the signs that can go away for a very long time. So you can take several months off kind of thing. Now there's another reason why you can take several months off and have a long, long holiday. So you, you can do that and that's also because you've got Scorpio here in your 10th house and so there are natural stops in your career natural breaks in your career so because of that you know that all right it, it'll be perfectly fine for me to take a few months off kind of thing you can do that some signs couldn't do it you might find it hard though because you love purpose and work and all these kinds of things and you've got Saturn lording your 12. So it would be hard. I do see that it would be hard to take a break or to take a holiday. But once you do, I think you could really get into it and you could, you're could. you a candidate who could um, go abroad for a whole year and do a vlog and make a business out of it. It's that kind of thing. So yeah, I, I really like the setup that's here. All right, Aquarius. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon, or Pisces Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Pisces, I've just done Aquarius, and I said to Aquarius that Aquarius is a lot like Pisces. And I'm going to say to you, you're a lot like Aquarius, and you can go and watch their one, because it's going to be quite similar. But like Aquarius... I think you'd have trouble to relax and the reason for that is because you've got Saturn lording your 12th house and Saturn is all about work. I also think that you might find it hard to take a holiday because you've got your Pisces ascendant so you naturally lose a lot of time anyway. Um, now, what do I mean here? You naturally lose time. Through just the course of living, I could imagine that you've got rest periods built in, or you do procrastinate a little bit, or you lose time somehow. Or maybe you don't have a firm grip on time as well. That could be a possibility. You're a sign that is ideal to learn, and this is quite a spiritual art actually. A lot of the great spiritual teachers talk about this, how to relax while you're working. That's something that you can master, that no other sign could be as good at as you. You could be really, really, really good at figuring out how to work hard and work a lot and have a big output yet you're relaxed during the whole thing 
so that you never burn out. You just keep perpetually refreshing along the way. You're the one sign that can do it. I've also got here that you might find it hard to relax. Um, if you take a break, you might feel guilty. That's another thing. And so this is a thing that I think maybe you guys need to work on, how to not feel guilty. And that's really interesting because you've got this here, Scorpio, uh, where in the, in the ninth house, there might be some guilt here because you might have had a, a sort of um, bit, of a, bit of a challenge relationship with father. Um, or there's something about father or authority making you feel guilty for stopping or taking time off or not being as consistent as well. And I think that guilt comes from your ninth house. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's because you've got Scorpio here, because you've got natural break points in career that will just naturally come up. You're, you're just built differently, Pisces. So please don't feel guilty, okay? Know that that is just the outside world not understanding you, but um, the right people will understand you. I definitely understand you. I understand that Pisces, and I'm not Pisces, by the way, so this is not coming from like personal experience or any of that, um, but like I feel like I have an understanding of this and what I feel like, because we've got, and we've also got next door we've got Sagittarius in the 10th house so I feel like you might have had um, father figures or bosses or the outside world or society or something like that making you feel bad for the fact that you're good at relaxing and that you kind of know how to build relaxation and rest into your life and into your days relaxing well so mm, I, I said two things there I said that you're not good at relaxing because you've got Saturn in in the in the twelfth, but this is but this is the dilemma. This is the kind of dilemma that I would imagine Pisces go through. That the the outside world and society doesn't understand that we're not supposed to be working twelve hour days every day for three hundred and sixty five days a year. We're not supposed to do that. Pisces knows that. Pisces knows how to build rest into the life. This is where it's complicated because for some of you, you might be quite conditioned by the outside world. It depends how much of your spiritual journey you've done. And if you've done a lot of your spiritual journey, you would be quite immune to what your dad says and society and the outside world and all that. You know how to be you and you know how to build rest into your life and into your days. <clears throat> it's very interesting Pisces I'm just going to check the notes and make sure that I've captured everything I've got here you would also need a purpose I would imagine if you're going on a holiday a humanitarian purpose would be great um, as well you could be doing charity or social work abroad or that kind of thing could connect you to foreign markets or travel or that kind of thing but yeah you do need a purpose as I say a humanitarian purpose I've got here, your work could be helping others relax. Creative professionals, filmmakers, a lot of filmmakers, Pisces, entertainment, entertainment, hospitality. These are great areas for you, Pisces. Got here, yeah, humanitarian work or films. The other thing is that you can travel alone. You'd be fine at traveling alone on your own. I'd imagine that you would be great at that. Pisces. And anyone who's watched the whole video, I do hope that you've enjoyed watching and stay tuned. I'd like to do more of these um, videos with the, you know, the whiteboard by my side. Uh, I'm going to edit that in afterwards. But um, the next one I want to do, I want to look at something like, and this is Jupiterian as well. I want to look at how do you like to learn? And again, we can look at the whole zodiac for each sign. And I'll just come up with my thoughts and synthesis and show you what I think. And you can let me know in the comments below how much of it resonates and of course how you experience all of these things with your signs. All right, well thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time.